spoke to Michael Sinney at the Southern Cross. Well, I, I actually never started playing football till I was the age of 18. Um, I came uh, second in a, a second or third in a competition when I in my first or second year back in the amateurs. Um, that was as close as I'd got. Why so long to pull on the football boots? Uh, well, basically, I was a, a, a big junior soccer player. Played till I was 16. Sustained an injury then. Kept me out for a year or so. And uh, a friend of mine asked me to fill in for the under-19s one day when they only had about 14 players. Hope this is not letting out a few truths. But anyway, um, filled in, played well. Coach asked me back. and. Two years later, I was down at Collingwood. That's a meteoric rise. Oh, it's just an amazing rise. Yeah. I, I wasn't recruited by Collingwood. It was just something that I thought I'd give it a go. If I had the talent, I'd make it. If not, uh, you know, so be it. I'll give it a go. Was it a lack, perhaps, of grounding in football in your youth that stopped you progressing in your definitely. AFL career? Oh, definitely. Look, I really believe I'm still learning the game. I, you know, if quite often I get out on the track early just to practice my kicking as I still you know, can't hit a target as quite as good as what you know a player that's played 10 years of junior football for example. What are your attributes as a footballer you think? Well I think uh, my talents to make it a colony was definitely my speed so uh, I think that had one um, uh, what well, that was one attribute. Uh, the rest, well, I think speed is, is an important factor in today's footy. Um, it's just getting quicker every day, and if you get, get the ball quicker and things like that, I definitely believe it's my speed. And the VFA has got quicker in the last three years? Oh, look, I just could not believe the standard um, of this year, for example, to last year and previous to that. It's just each year it's getting higher and higher, and you get the sides becoming stronger. Unfortunately, you get the side or two where they're languishing, but hopefully that you know they'll come up. What sort of influence has Brian Taylor been on you? Uh, he brought you across from Collingwood and obviously saw something that he thought he could use, well, to a Paran Premiership, perhaps in 93. I'm in awe of the man, I really am. And especially this year, um, I think without his playing, um, it's just improving all the time. And, I think it's at the level where uh, his, he could go on to be really good and you know, go on to the ranks of the Lee Matthews. Well, obviously Lee's in his own league, but um, Brian Taylor's based his coaching around the Lee Matthews because that's where he gets his success from. And um, uh, yeah, he's just been great. Really good. The vote count, with one round of voting to be counted, you're two behind David King, and you knew you had the game coming up against Frankston, where you kicked four goals. You must have had an inkling that some, you could get some votes, or maybe even tie. Or... Well, I really gave myself no chance, because for three quarters, I thought I'd had a very ordinary day. Frankston, S. Goosey, one vote. Paran, R. Chapel. Two votes. Paran M. Sinney. It's just been something I, I just totally did not expect. Although when they left it to the last call, I thought, well, something's going on here, definitely. But no, I gave myself no chance. Michael, Paran's a, a proud club with a long history, and you're a very worthy first Liston medalist from uh, Turek Park. Michael Sinney, a very popular win the other day, a surprising one, but no one begrudged him his victory and uh, he dedicated the win to his father, father who passed yeah. away last year. His father didn't want him to play Australian rules football because he thought it was too dangerous. The irony, he got injured playing soccer and came over to footy.
It's, just, it's funny, isn't it? We often talk about players being good blokes as well as good footballs, but he's the classic, isn't he, Sam, who's a real top bloke? And I, I've said a few good bloke, the do you screen, know, Michael? Well, he used to come into our office and deliver <laughs> the mail. And we'd always have a yarn about the footy in the foyer. And he was so, it was so refreshing, yeah. you know, such an honest, open, always got a big smile on his face when he brought the mail. And so I got to know him that way. And also a terrific player. And he played like that. He plays like that on the footyville. Full of life, isn't he? Effervescent. Gets the ball. Great I team thought... player. And it's terrific to see him win it. Yeah. Yeah, look, I don't think anyone begrudges Michael Sinney winning. I think he's a worthy recipient. But I think it did once again highlight the anomaly of uh, umpires casting votes. You know, it was unfortunate that, and I'm sure that no one begrudges the victory, but the fact that the last game had to be highlighted as his three-voter, which everyone knew very well, despite his last quarter influence, it wasn't a three-vote game. And That's once the again, the question posed... Oh, well, well who, who, should give them? Yeah. who should give the uh, vote? Well, there should be yeah. umpires yeah. don't do it. I sure. mean, there's no one else, I don't think, in a position to give votes. Sure, so, but... Uh, it shouldn't detract from the fact that Michael City is, in fact, a worthy recipient. I think he was, a, as you say, he's a fantastic player, and he's ruled that wing along Orong Road you know, for the last two or three years with uh, accomplishment that he said himself evokes memories of the year. great uh, <laughs> Brian true. Keneally. Well, we'll see him back here in action at uh, Moorabbin next week in the first semi-final, Paran against the winner of this game. Before we go back to the cutthroat, Alton, Oakley was starting to make a few teams uh, stand up and take notice of them. Ross Booth has Shane O'Sullivan.